Welcome back to episode 3 of Fearless Foxes, our Leicester City Football Manager 2019 save. And as you can see on screen, it's transfer deadline day today and it's a big day because I've had a lot of money burning its hole through my pocket, as you can imagine. About 30 odd million to spend up front, you know, extension for more. And I decided to make a big play for many, many players. I'm hoping today we're going to be able to confirm it through. You'll watch it through me and we'll be able to see if we can pull through what will probably be the biggest signing for Leicester City in quite a long time. I'm very excited. Hopefully we'll be able to um, yeah, get it over the line. Anyway, we're going to take part and just see how this goes. And um, it is a few days away from Burnley at home. Do I plan to loan Hamza Chowdhury out? Right, um, I feel we better uh, better served by remaining at the club for now, so we're going to keep him there. We're going to get a lot of questions now. I've said yes to that, aren't we? Right, and as you can see here, it looks like the deal has gone through. A loan moves are like for Chowdhury. We've got our pre-match analysis of Burnley. And as you can see here, there he is. Jacob Brun Larson has agreed to join the club from Borussia Dortmund for an original fee of 20 million, rising up to 25 million. As you can see down here, we've got a few little add ons here, like a percentage of profit from next sale. And as you can see here as well, he's on £80,000 a week on a four year deal. Now, you might notice something here which is interesting, and that is that he does have a minimum fee release clause, which is not something I necessarily would normally like in a player. I don't think any of us really want to have that in a player at all. But um, um, 83 million seem very remarkably um, fair actually in the current market and it does expire two years into his contract. Um, obviously we're looking to try and build the club to European football as he wants to play European football. So in that in mind it's quite a good fit for me and he's probably the best we could have got. So I'm going to accept it now and welcome Jacob Brun Larson. I'm excited for this. I think he's really going to look at um, being uh, our left sided player. As you can see, he's midfield left. He can play as an inside forward there. I think while he's not got the full stats now, he's a very young guy with great attributes. He is going to be a top, top player in this game. And I think he'll be a starting um, attacking left for us. With all respect to Damari Gray, he'll probably come in as more of an impact sort of sub now um, as we look to build this Leicester City team and see how we can get on in the new season. So, yeah, that's really good news to get him in. Um, yeah, so I'm absolutely chuffed for that. Right, that'll be the end of the window. I don't think anyone else is going to go out unless we get any last-minute loan deals that come in through the door. I'm going to ask Casper Schmeichel to um, welcome his um, national team buddy, which is wonderful. Right, we just need to give a squad number now to our new signing. Um, he wants number 34. I'm pretty sure he yeah, has been taking one of our young players, so that causes a slight issue. So he's going to have to go for the number 12 we got free, which was kept free. Um, let's hope he doesn't kick up too much of a stink about that. It still suits you, Jacob. Um, you know, I'm sure it would do you well at Leicester City, the number 12 shirt. So there we go. Anyway, let's skip forward now. We're just going to get to the end of the window because right around the corner, as you can see, we're going away to Turf Moor for our first game of the new um, Premier League campaign. And that's really um, one of those games which fills me with a little bit of dread because it's one of those that's a massive, massive banana skin. If we get, slip it, uh, if we get caught up in it... Um, it's a really terrible start to our season and bear in mind we've got following that a back-to-back -back episode coming up which is going to be Manchester City and Tottenham Hotspur so three games in that could be very difficult Danny Amati has also now got sprained knee ligaments um, yeah so I'm going to say to him don't worry about your injury he likes my support which is wonderful Manchester United signed Luka Mihovic from Crystal Palace. We'll have a quick look through as the window closes and see what other business has been done elsewhere because it's always interesting to see what else happens in the game and see who's going where. You can see these little bits up top here that keep popping up. The transfer the line has now officially passed. We've got the window roundup and the scouting meeting. Let's go back to the window roundup and view the transfers here. Right, so if we have a quick look... I'm trying to see if we can see what's the best way. See if there's anything that pops out here from us. So, do, 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 do. let's see who people have been signing in the Premier League. I'm looking down this column here. Everton have got Danny Welbeck on a free transfer. There you go. In real life, he went to Watford, I believe, today. But there we go. Danny Welbeck have picked him up. That'll be interesting. He's quite injury prone. He wasn't someone I was interested in looking at particularly. Um, oh, Huddersfield in the Championship. Pick up Ashley Westwood. That could be quite good. And Frank Tab now from Good Job. He's a bit of a um, FIFA legend, isn't he, in some regard? Keep going down. Man United, Mihovic from Palace. Cool, yeah, he's, he's really solid on this. He's guaranteed to bin you a penalty in the top corner as well, or just hard down the middle. I don't think he's missed a penalty. He's a wonderful player. Let me keep going down, see if there's anyone else who jumps out at us here. 
Doesn't look like it. This is just a transfer deadline day deal. So there's obviously been other bits and bobs that would have been done before. As we're going to come back out here and see the major ones. Yeah, Daniel Rigani has gone to um, Man City from Juventus for 26.5. He's a very good centre-half. Daniel Sturridge has gone to West Ham on a free. So we've had two ex-England internationals now go to two pretty top clubs there on free transfers. And Bayern Munich have taken Rudiger from Chelsea. Which is quite interesting because they have got the transfer ban in this game. So that's going to make them a little bit more... Um, weaker at the back and maybe we can compete with them a bit more now are we going to do a press conference we probably should but I'm not going to let's hope it doesn't upset him too much um, no we just wanted to get Jacob in he was our one big spend like we said at the start of our vision we wanted to have one big spend and sort out in this summer transfer window and we're really happy with what we managed to do here so we're just going to finally confirm our registration he has another 21 as well so we don't have to register him in um, which is wonderful and I think that brings our average age of our squad down even more now right we're going to now switch our attention to Burnley Leicester City take on Burnley and I think it's time I'll take you through the team right the team today we're going to go with Kasper Schmeichel and go I'm watching my condition here as I go obviously the game's tomorrow I'd like to pick it a day before just so when the opposition instructions are given by the assistant or by yourself if you do do that in game it's been given directly to the players who are in the starting 11 I think I've noticed something before if you don't do that sometimes it just doesn't work at all and you end up going in the game with no knowledge which obviously isn't helpful in any way so we've got Ricardo Pereira is going to be at right back we're going to go for Felipe Benkovic for his Leicester City debut as the um, more static defender and he's going to play alongside Harry Maguire even though Maguire's um, condition isn't brilliant that means Ward and Evans will go on the bench here as a starting point as well as I try and build a rounded bench with this Chilwell will start a left back and then we're going to go with Ndidi as the box to box on the left right hand side we'll go for Tillemans who is going to be our deep line playmaker and then we get to where the meaty action is up front we know Vardy's going to be the top man he's not got great condition either but we can still hop him in there I think that means we're going to have to get Nacho on the bench. And a... Ooh, should we go for a Nacho? Yeah, a Nacho should be there. Probably him. And probably Perez as well, actually. But we'll have a look at it in a minute. James Madison will play at the top of the three, as we expected. Jacob Brun Larson has still got a knock. He's still going to be out for a couple of weeks. So that means Damari Gray will get the nod on the left-hand side away at Burnley. And the question now is right-hand side. Um, bearing in mind we've got Tottenham and uh, Manchester City coming up um, very shortly. I don't think that's the sort of game to chuck Henry Moir in for his Leicester debut. But I'd like to see what he can do. Because obviously he's got some very interesting flair stats and he's got a lot of agility um, it's similar to Damari Gray in that regard which might not be a great but we will give him the start against Burnley and we'll see how it goes so I've still got three places to fill on the bench we're gonna go bear in mind we've got a few knocks and injuries Hamza Chowdhury will take a place on the bench because he could be the box-to-box all the ball winning slash deep line playmaker Riyad Boulabou's have to go on the bench he's got great set pieces and the last option I think we're gonna go for Mark Albrighton and I think actually saying that, Iosi Perez is going to get another collection of the Inacho. Let's have a quick look at the two of them here a minute. There's not a lot in it really. They're both kind of viewed as backup players. Um, Nacho's probably better in game, but we'll go for the new guy and we will head to the game. This is exciting. It's so excited for the first game of the season, man. Right, attending the press conference. Um, I'm confident we've had a positive preseason, which isn't actually true. I should have shown you the preseason results. They've been very mixed. We've had a lot of domination in shots and possession, and all these things we expected with the 4 5 1 dominant formation we were primarily developing. Um, but we haven't really turned it into wins. Draws and losses pretty much across the, um, you know, across the board. I've signed a number of young players. Yeah, that's part of my philosophy, as we saw. Um, good action in training for weeks. Yeah, we're keen to get it underway. Um, Jacob um, will be coming in very shortly um, I think Sean Dyche is not my favourite manager in the world he's very anti Leicester in real life I just don't want to talk about him not at all right so right and here we go as you can see Arsenal taking on Liverpool what a start to the season for those two Newcastle and Man United in a later kick off but we'll be taking on Burnley so we got our team set up ready to go this is the time where we see how good we are. Some fitness tests have been failed. None of these guys obviously are going to be involved. Cool. Liverpool managed to win with an own goal from Burton Leno and Sadio Omani winning late on. Wow. Right. Team selection. We know. We'll see it all in its glory. That's what it's going to look like today for Leicester City. And 
let's get out there and just see how this works. Obviously, we have got the two other formations in backup if this doesn't work out so well or if this doesn't achieve what we want. It is a slight concern that um, it is very poorly in that we might um, not be taking chances that we otherwise would if we were a bit more forward. But we'll see how it goes. We're going to go to the dressing room. Emil Heskey's asked us to do it for the fans. I agree. Vardy's gained a bit of confidence. Let's go around and just give all these guys a little G up. Vardy's already happy, so we'll ignore that. We'll head to the tunnel. My first match, I can't wait to get started, absolutely. Yeah, Ben Gibson being missing is really helpful. Right, and off we go here. As you can see here, Burnley kick off, and they're heading from uh, left to right, and we're going from right to left for this first half here. Got the settings quite high up, because I like to see a bit of impactfulness in the game. First 10 minutes flies by here, and Burnley have had any chance. A corner comes in, Wood tries to get on the end of it, and it's cleared away. Rodriguez to Taylor. Goodmanson to Wood who's in and he's scored for Burnley here. It's 14 minutes on the clock and it's Burnley 1, Leicester City 0 against his old club. John Moss is heading to VAR here. Is he going to rule it out? Is he going to rule it out? It's the first goal we've encountered and it's not been ruled out. It is a goal and it is Chris Wood and Schmeichel got a hand to it here. We're going to go to the 3D replay. Goodmanson picked it up. Some Great hold-up play. We looked at Goodmanson and Wood just rifled it. Full power to Schmeichel, who no doubt should have done a bit better, really. He was a bit flimsy in the hands. This is where the VAR decision came in. Yeah, he was miles on side. Our offside trap came up way too late and for the wrong guy. And Chris Wood scores against his old club. And that is a terrible start for us here. Right. 20 minutes in. Burnley won less than now as the game shoots on, man. Yeah, I think this formation is not working well for us at all. We've barely been in the game as it's another throw for Burnley, another highlight, and it's a wonder goal from Afri Aqua on his debut, the free transfer from Torino. Wow, I cannot believe what's going on here. Aqua, and it was a curling, looping strike, and it's straight in the top corner. Would you believe it? It's a goal of the season candidate, and it's the first game. I can't believe it. We're going to get to half time here and we're going to have to change. And I think we're going to not go 4 4 2. We're going to go 3 5 2, ultra attacking, and see if we can turn this around. It's the lack of impetus in our game. But anyway, we've got a chance. Can we get a consolation goal? Damari Gray, and it's in for Leicester. It's James Madison. And it came from absolutely nothing. It was deflected around. Here we go to the 3D replay. Chilwell throws it into the box. Madison wins the header against Loughton. Gray, the ball is tackled off of him and he just smashes it in. Eaton was not expecting it at his near post and it's a bit of a lifeline for Leicester here just on the break. Everyone else is playing awfully but Madison's strike there just broke the net and brought the Foxes back into contention. We get a half time here and it's 2-1 and as you can see from the stats we've had a lot of possession We've not had a lot. This is a sort of formation where it's not going to create the most interesting football. I'm going to tell them I'm not very happy and I'm still going to change the formation because I don't want to rest on my laurels here. I want them to show me something else in the second half. Um, let's have a go at the midfield as well because they didn't really react. Um, I'm not happy. Right, at least got Tillemans fired up. Let's end the team talk. The players look ready to walk through walls. I'm now going to quickly go to my tactics. As you can see, we've got the other two. We're going to go for the third tactic, the 3-5-2. I really want to try and keep Madison on here because he's been playing so well. So he'll go into the role-playing midfielder, uh, roaming midfielder, sorry, roaming playmaker. Um, Tillemans hasn't had a great name, but he'll go as a ball player. And we've got Tamari Gray. We're going to take Tamari Gray off him. We're going to replace him with our target man coming on here. Our replacement for Islam Slomani. And then the rest of the team, I think Emily Moir, yeah, we'll make a change here and we will get Johnny Evans on as well. So it's a bit of a dramatic change. We've had to bring another defender on. Um, Benkovic, I think, will go static. Yep, and as you can see, that our back three is really well accustomed to that. We're going to start the second half here. Two changes. Evans on. Onatshu on. Moore off. Gray off. Can we turn this around here and go full-blown at Burnley? This is a test of our tactical strength. Oh my word. Time is still shooting by here. Time is still shooting by. Right, chance for Burnley by looks of it. We're down towards their half. Goodmanson's got plenty of space to do something with here, but indeed he blocks it well. Tarowski. I think we need to counter press a bit more here. We're sort of letting them come on a bit too much from here. I'm not seeing enough pressing down, definitely. Goodmanson for Burnley. Wood, back to Goodmanson. He can hit them from distance, and that's the danger Burnley have got. They've shown it already. Allowed him to cross in to Rodriguez. It's 3-1 Burnley here at Turf Moor, and I think, tactically, we need to quickly make another change here. 
Um, I definitely need to get them closing down a bit more. They're not closing down enough. Even though I thought it was a really high. Pressing is more. We're going to go for extremely urgent. Prevent the short. Yep, yep, yep. Right. I didn't realise I had a defensive shape this low, actually. Um, I want to counter press and counter. I thought I'd set this up slightly differently, actually, ironically. So that's why it's not been as effective. Or at least that's my excuse, and that's what I'm going to use. Right. We are going to push up and use the offside trap. Yep, and that is that. Right. Confirm the changes. Let's go here. Oh, my word. We need two goals in the last half an hour to at least get a point from this game. And we've made hard work of it if we manage it. Here comes the replay. The ball's crossed in. Rodriguez, what a strike. We've seen some great goals here for the first day of the season. Jay Rodriguez with utter quality, the new signing. Back at Burnley. The ball's in. He's onside. Ricardo Pereira has played him onside there. But the finish, my Christ. Right. Can we do something here? Let's shout at them a bit here. Come on, I need to demand more. Leicester bringing the ball forward here. Madison plays it down to Ricardo, who's going to add the width. He crosses it in, and Nacho's there. Wins the header, but Heaton, unfortunately, makes an easy save. It wasn't powerful enough to get it into the dangerous place. Lowton's picked up a knock-in, replaced by Kevin Long for um, Burnley as we move into the last 20 minutes. They're focused off the feedback, but our performances still aren't great, and Vardy's not playing particularly well. And in fact, that is where I'm going to go. It's probably a fitness issue for Jamie Vardy, so Ayuzi Perez is going to come on. I would perhaps have liked Boulibus, but actually uh, Madison is a free-kick specialist as well, so consequently it won't make much of a difference. Madison for free kick, off the wall. God, if that had flown in, I would have hit the ceiling. Plays the ball up to El Nacho, though, who is offside. No VAR needed for that, unfortunately. Again, towards the last five minutes of the game here at Turf Moor. It's still Burnley 3, Leicester 1. Ricardo comes forward here and picks out Ozzy Perez. Ricardo cutting inside here. Gets the shot away. Perez hits the bottom of the post from range. He just absolutely flicked it on the half volley. Oh, my word. It's just not going to fall our way today. We've probably now had similar amounts of chances to Burnley. But you've got to say our first half performance was so diabolical that we definitely haven't deserved anything from this game. Ball cross. Good months. And he could have made it four, you know. And that's with three at the back as well. Sorry, five at the back um, in theory. Right. Looks like we're going to start the first game of the season with a defeat. Four minutes of added time here just to finish off. Corner to Burnley. Let's not make it 4-1. Good Munson tries to curl one in from outside the area just to get the icing on the cake. Chris Wood wins a corner here for Burnley. Sorry, goal kick. It came back off Wood again. Kasper Schmeichel, he apparently he's taking his time. I don't know why because we could, you know, goal difference could be all that important. Chihuahua hoops it long and actually picks it up. Can he find? No, he can't find Perez. The ball's quite poor. Evans wins the header. We're just literally waiting for time to run out now, time to expire, and it does. The points belong to Burnley. It's a shocking start here for Leicester, really. And like I said, they're a banana skin team. If we look at the match stats overall, 50-50 possession, total foul, shots on target, not a lot in it. Quality on the day. If you look at the overall averageness of Burnley, they overall play better. We had one or two players, sorry, one player in Madison who did well. The rest weren't really up to dodge. Really, let's be frank, they just weren't up to dodge. Right, disappointing, absolutely. Let's have a real go at them. Right, moving on. So, it says the Clarence strike lucky. Overall, the stats said it was equal. I don't really think we were good enough to get anything from that game. And we are going to go back and have a look at those tactics and just see if I can make a few tweaks before we play the next couple of games. I don't think we're far off. We just need to maybe affect the lines a little bit and just make a few difference. We're going to attend the press conference. Um, I don't really want to throw them under the bus um, at this time because of the confidence level, especially when we've got two games coming up where we could have some difficult times. Uh, we'll do better for sure. Yeah, we're quite disappointed. Uh, yeah, click through this. It was good to see him find the back of the net, absolutely. Uh, I don't have an opinion about technology. Absolutely, I don't want to rush our new striker. Right, and yeah, as we head into a massive couple of games in the next episode we are in the relegation zone so really that's a good place to end off we have played one game away at Burnley we're off the running for the season with no points whatsoever but still nothing to worry about because who have we got up next having a quick look at our schedule just an easy home game against Man City in the way to Tottenham Hotspur and we'll see that next time thank you very much for watching cheers now bye bye 
next time on Fearless Foxes FM. This is getting closer and closer. We're knocking Damari Gray with a chance now. I really want to shout at them angry after that because that was really terrible.